I would like to introduce you the first speaker of today. Jan Kotík is passionate force originating from Zlín, Czech Republic, dedicated to forging meaningful connections and unlocking potential of all of us. With an international relations degree from Prague University of Economics and Business and an MBA degree from Bradley University in the US, Jan has pioneered and nurtured diversity, equity, inclusion programs at Škoda Auto and SEAT. Currently leading communication and strategy at Škoda Academy Learning Development Department at Škoda Auto, Jan is also a DEI ambassador in the Czech Republic. Jan's impact extends to being a core team member of Škoda Proud Employee Network, advocating LGBT plus initiatives in the Czech Republic and serving as an advisory board member at DNI Shapers by Open. Jan is committed to fostering a more inclusive world. Jan, please, the stage is yours. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jan Kotík. I am 33 years old. I come from Zlin, a beautiful city in the east part of the Czech Republic. I work for Škoda Auto, and I am gay. Now, having said that, I actually spilled all the beans, and I think that we could finish my talk, right? But I would like to highlight one thing. Being able to stand here in front of a full room of people being able to say, I am gay, without blushing, without even lowering my voice, without hiding, or, you know, just hiding it behind something else, you know, like, for, for example, I'm from the other side, or something like that, is a huge progress, and I'm really, I'm really proud, sorry, thank you for the uh, acknowledgement, I'm really proud to be standing here and being able to share this moment uh, with you. And so, for the next 15 minutes or so, I would like to invite you to be part of this journey, of my story, of how I was able to come here and say that I am gay. Uh, since it's the first time I'm doing it, so I might need to ask you for a little bit of help. If my voice sh shakes or I get overwhelmed by emotions, please bear with me. I'm sure we're going to get through tonight. So the first time I heard the word gay was when I was 11 years old. Uh, a classmate approached me and asked, hey, what's your name? And I said, Jan. And he said, okay, and can I call you gay? Of course, I didn't know what it meant, gay, so I said, yeah, whatever. I completely squeezed out this memory, uh, and then when I was in my 20s, I actually realized that this happened to me. And I squeezed out this memory because the word gay, since I didn't know what it meant, was quickly associated in my world with something negative. Something like being flawed, something to be ashamed of, something wrong. And, uh, you know, looking back, looking back at my childhood or even, you know, growing up, uh, or at my primary school and my high school, I met amazing people. I had great teachers, I had great friends, uh, I think that many teachers would call me a kid that you want to teach because I was always prepared. I had good remark, uh, uh, good notes, you know, good results, and I was just, you know, there for everyone. A, a friend called me a sunshine of our class. However, looking back, there is this vacuum that I feel because nobody told me that being gay was actually an option. No one, and since, you know. I was result, sometimes there were situations when people called me, or my peers called me faggot or gay, because it happened. I would sometimes even cry, and my teachers, you know, they would say, oh, I'm so sorry that this is happening to you, Jan. It must be because they're jealous of your, you know, successes or, or your results at school. Well, it's nice to hear that, right? It's something that will confront you at the moment, but looking back, I just needed somebody to say, this is wrong to say, and being gay is absolutely fine. But nobody told me that. And since there was this vacuum, unfortunately, uh, it was filled with another emotion that, that happened to me. When I was 14, my mom took me on an educational weekend. Uh, now, looking back from today's perspective, I would call it an esoteric or transcendent weekend, 
where we learned everything about the space energy and universe and um, chakras and all these things, which is not, not bad, you know, because I, I think sometimes it's important to also address the spiritual side of your life. However, at one of the coffee breaks, uh, one of the leaders or fortune teller, I would call perhaps even, she, uh, she was addressed by one of the attendants, can you please uh, tell me, uh, you know, something about homosexuality, like how, how can we address it from this perspective of this seminar? And this, this person said, well, you know, uh, homosexual, homosexuality can actually be fixed. Uh, you have to go through a series of regressions, whatever that meant, I was 14, I didn't know what regression they meant with that. And you have to reprogram your brain or your memories, and perhaps even you have to go back to your prenatal st stadium of your life in order to fix it. And <laughs> I thought, okay, I was leaving from this weekend with homosexuality can be cured. And this was the compass that stick, stuck with me for many years ahead. And I was always coming back, bouncing back towards this idea in my mind that, you know, what I heard from the peers, being gay is wrong, it's flawed, and to be, there's something to be ashamed of, and if we clock, it can be cured. So when I was 19, I uh, finally graduated from my high school and I went to Prague to study mathematics actually. And I did what a good boy would do. I met, I fell in love with a woman. And uh, something just wasn't right. Something just didn't work out. And I didn't know how to fix it. And so I looked back into my history and I said, well, perhaps it's time to reach out to these uh, advisors, healers, self-invited uh, fortune tellers, and asked them for help, which I did. And I went on several sessions where, you know, I remember going back in, into my childhood memories or trying to, to figure out, you know, things, how they were connected together. And uh, there was one sentence that came after several of these sessions. Jan, you will be able to be with a woman. And it's exactly what I needed at the time. I needed somebody with an authority for me at that moment to tell me exactly that. And so I left and I struggled a little bit more, but then I remember, luckily, because I had amazing people around me, one of my classmates, she, she told me, Jan, actually, you know, sexuality, it's something that can evolve until the age of 30. So just don't, don't rush yourself, just take your time, uh, you can be gay and it's fine and you can find out later. And uh, thanks to the love that I received from my friends, I was able to say, finally, I remember walking down the Wenceslav Square at the age of 22, uh, I'm gay. That I deserve to be happy, just like everybody else deserves to be happy, and I'm gay. And you know, one thing is coming out to yourself, but it's just the beginning of a really difficult journey. What does it mean to be gay? How do I actually, you know, start being a gay? There, was, there were no role models. There was just a vacuum. There was just nothing that I could, you know, take an advice from. And <laughs> I remember things like if I touch a man, which I found really disgusting at the time because, you know, like, of course, I was straight until, the day, uh, until that time, uh, will I get HIV? You know, I, I, there were really, like, re shortcuts in my mind that I just couldn't, I couldn't uh, uh, figure it out myself. And so, the next year, when I was 23, I decided that I need to also come out to my family. And I decided that I would start with my mom. I went for a really long walk with my mom, and I said, after a lot of hesitation, Mom, I fancy boys. And she told me, she was startled, you know, she, she didn't know how to really react, but it wasn't anything negative that she would start crying or anything, but she said, but Jan, I asked you when you were 18 if you like boys. And I said, Mom, you know, when I was 18, I didn't even know that being gay was an okay option. So of course I said no. And then said, well, but I have to ask you something. Please don't tell anyone else in the family because they would blame me for raising you wrong. And I was a good boy, right? So I said, I'm sorry, I said, 
okay, it sounds rigid enough. And I said, not even to my sister. And she said, not even to your sister, unless you have a serious relationship, which I didn't have and sounded straight, uh, you know, pretty straightforward for me. However, the problem with this was that I took on a lot of burden that put me back on a journey of being closeted for many, many years coming. Now, looking back at all those situations that I just described, I was always queer. Ever since I was a little child, I was gay. And just a little light up. <laughs> you know, when I was a really small boy, I mean, you know, dressing up as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a girl doesn't mean anything, of course, but I was always queer. I would choose, you know, this is a, an official representative ball of my high school where I was dancing as an oriental dancer, and I loved it. Of course, I got a question afterwards, are you gay? I said, no. <laughs> Uh, but this, this is it. It's, it's fun, you know, looking back that at those times I was 100% sure that I am not gay. But now, looking back, I, I realized I was always gay. <laughs> now, of course, this is Pride Business Forum Voices, so we should also talk about the companies, right? And uh, I joined Chikora actually exactly five years ago in February 2019. So I was just on the 1st of February celebrating the fifth anniversary. And I'm really proud to be working for Škoda. But, uh, you know, when I joined Škoda, I was looking for signals if I can be outed or not. And I would like to share two moments where I figured out that I can't be out. One of the managers uh, in my f first weeks at Škoda went to some uh, webinar or some, some event, educational event in Prague and came back with a rainbow bag and he told me, you know, I got this rainbow gift bag and I had to throw it away because I was afraid that if I come home, my kids will laugh at me and so I, I needed to, to, to throw it away. And then he told me, can you imagine flying a rainbow flag here at Skoda? That will probably never happen. And I felt to myself, yeah, probably that will never happen. It still hasn't happened. We have it on the bucket list, but we are getting there. Uh, and the second one, perhaps more serious, is that uh, in 2019, I was still in my function as a diversity specialist for a few weeks. Uh, we received a letter from IBM, an open letter to the Prime Minister, uh, Andrei Babish, to support the same-sex marriage. Can you imagine that five years ago we were having the open letter and now we have another open letter and I don't know how many open letters we have to have to get the same-sex marriage in the Czech Republic, but we get the letter and somehow miraculously, even though I wasn't a manager or anything, I was new in the company, I received this email from the management asking me for uh, you know, the statement, what should we do? And I said, we should sign it. And I gave some reasons why. Some other managers supported this idea, but then when we get to the top management, uh, I remember I was in the room, uh, the manager said, we will not sign it because this will put off our customers. And for me, that was the moment when I said, okay, I can't be gay in this company. Luckily, since I was working in diversity and I'm very passionate about people, I got to know to some amazing professionals and now also friends. I met Jana Tikalova from Oping, who was mentoring me a lot to become a real diversity expert. I met Jana Vichroňová from Vodafone, who's a true LGBT ally. And I met also Adela Horáková and Česla Valek from Pride Business Forum. All of them invested a lot of time into me to grow as a professional, as a human being. And I allowed them, and I'm really thankful that I did. Česlav invited me in 2020 to be a judge at the LGBT Friendly Employer of, by Pride Business Forum. And uh, I saw all those applications. And I was like, wow, I really want Chikora to be like those companies, like we can do it. We're number one employer in the Czech Republic. We're the biggest one. We have a social imp moral imperative to be like those other companies. And so we started working on the application to become a member of the Pride Business Forum. It took only about nine or 10 months to proceed it internally. Thank you, corporate uh, world. <laughs> but we got there. And what was even more beautiful, uh, a group of four amazing Škodians approached me uh, at the same time, in 2021, and said, hey, Jan, we're looking for somebody from HR who could help us. You know, we were meeting online because it was the time of the uh, pandemia, and we'll, we would like to start an employee network, and we just need somebody from HR to help us. 
And I said, yes, yes, I have no idea how to start an ARG. We don't have any rules for that, but please, let's do it. And I'm really thankful to all of my four Škodians, my friends, that we were able to launch uh, Škoda Proud Employee Resource Group. And so you had this beautiful combination of company as a corporate joining Pride Business Forum, and also the employees starting a movement from the, from the bottom. Now, it was just the beginning, and many great things happened ever since. We did a lot of webinars, we did a lot of talks, uh, we went to Prague Pride, which was amazing, and back in 2022 for the first time, uh, we participated in uh, uh, Pride Business Forum events and conferences, we even mentored other companies within the Czech Republic how to start an ERG just to help each other, just like we were helped you know, with other com uh, by other companies. Now, 2023, last year, was one of the best years I ever had in my life. Majority of the time I spent in SEAT in Barcelona, because SEAT is also part of Volkswagen Group, just like Škoda, and it was the first time I really felt like I can be fully gay around anything that I did. Not just at work, but also on the street, everywhere. Living in Barcelona was very informing because everywhere you went, you saw gay couples holding hands or lesbian couples. You, you went hiking to a really small village in the mountains and you would see rainbow flags on a cafe saying everybody is welcome. And at work, my colleagues were saying, mi marido, like a, 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 male, a male colleague saying, my husband, and a female colleague saying, my wife. And it was so beautiful because it's so natural. And I didn't experience it at Škoda or anywhere else. Unfortunately, we still can't experience it because you can't get married at, uh, in the Czech Republic yet with the same sex. Uh, and so I, it was very encouraging. And then also, here I would like to really say how proud for the first time I felt to be an employee of Škoda Auto last year. Škoda did an amazing step forward last year. We signed the open letter by Vodafone to the Prime Minister Petr Fiala uh, to support same-sex marriage. Our CEO, together with his family, went to the Pride, and he and his family signed the same-sex marriage petition themselves. And also we introduced the rainbow car, the, the Škoda Enyaq Coupe respect line. And here, really, thank you, Martina, for all the hidden work behind, because I know that you had to do a lot of work in order to get Škoda where we are now. So thank you so much for that. Now, after saying all these things, and I, I have a feeling that I'm still losing the sound with the microphone, so I'm so sorry. I think the next time we have to have the headset. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> now, after telling you my personal story, and also my story as an employee of Škoda, uh, perhaps I would like to tell you also a little bit what you can do. First of all, uh, when you come out as an individual, you don't have to be alone. One of the things that happened to me when I came out to myself, I felt really alone. And it doesn't have to be alone. You don't have to be alone. And every, nobody deserves to be alone in these situations. So reach out, create a peer support work. Exactly what we have with Škoda Proud at Škoda. When an employee joins Škoda Auto, I want them to know that there is Škoda Proud, a safe space where you can be whoever you are. Even if your boss is homophobic, there is still Škoda Proud where you can have this safe space and everybody deserves to have a safe space in their life. Secondly, if you feel, secondly, educate yourself. I put a, a, a recommendation for a book that I really like, The Well Wet Rage. It helped change my life. I read it like five times. It's great for gay men, but also for everybody else just to understand what a gay man goes through from overcoming the shame to being authentic. I'm still on my journey to being an authentic myself because I still do not 100% understand what being gay man means. But, you know, I'm trying to figure it out along the way. And then if you feel strong enough, be an advocate. You know, I would never say that I would become an activist, but this is me at an ANO happening here at Praha Stodulke. Uh, uh, I, for the first time, I was putting together this stand, which it's not that easy, you know, like to, to put this together. And I was talking to politicians like Karel Havlicek and, and somebody else from ANO, and, uh, lis you know, listening to some insults about me, who I am, who, what, what I should be like. And uh, then, of course, 
You can be talking at conferences or sharing your stories because there is something really powerful about sharing your stories. And secondly, or last but not least, when you talk about, uh, when you talk about LGBT people, don't, oh, don't repeat those mistakes that I showed in the slide previously. Don't say that homosexuality can be cured or fixed. Say that you know, being gay or what, anything else is 100% fine and you will be okay. And so, having said that, one thing that I missed throughout my life was somebody telling me that you are okay. And I repeat this exercise to myself because I was always you know, getting, trying to get a lot of validation uh, from outside in order to f feel that I'm okay. And I say to myself now, to my little myself, that I'm okay. At Škoda, sometimes I do an exercise that try to say what LGBT plus mean. LGBT plus stands for lesbians, gays, bisexuals, trans people, and the plus can represent other uh, people with other sexual orientation or gender identity. Say it five times, say it 20 times. You'll probably make a lot of mistakes. It's fine, say it 100 times. It's gonna get, you know, flawless. And then say it 1,000 times, and you will actually meet people. You will meet gay people. You will meet uh, trans people. You will fill those letters with stories. And there is something really powerful about not just talking about abstract forms, but talking about real people. So now, before I end, please look at to your right and to your left, and so say to your colleague here, you are OK. You are okay, you are worthy of being loved. And this is something that you can practice. So when you have a child, when you have a relative, when you have a colleague, when you have a neighbor who is LGBT+, you will know what to do and you will not repeat some of the mistakes that can sometimes happen. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for allowing me to share my story with you and I wish you a wonderful evening. I think and you are much more than okay and thank you very much for sharing your your story and now there is time for a question so i will open up my electronic device to see them uh, if i will be able to do it yes i am okay so let's see yeah there are already some but i have the first one from our team and the question is, what does it mean for you to be the LGBTQ plus face of Škoda? Well, I don't really consider myself to be an LGBTQ plus face of Škoda, but I can tell you one thing. It's really important. When I joined Škoda, I don't know whether this is working. Yeah, it's, yeah, working. it's still working. When I joined Škoda, there were no role models. There were no LGBT plus role models. And even within Volkswagen Group, when you think, uh, take into consideration that there's about 670,000 employees of Volkswagen Group around the world, we have over 20,000 people in management, I only get to know to two top level senior managers from the group that are openly gay and that are ad advocates and they are loud. And I think that it's not enough. We need more representation, more visibility, and you know, for me, when growing up, it was easier to be closeted and to go and trying to be straight and, and pretend and, and go with what I thought that the society wanted me to be. But then at the end, you know, change doesn't happen al alone and it takes a lot of time. So sometimes when you get the right resources, the right people around you and the right support, you can, you know, be active. And it's worth it. But being active and, and being out there also is dangerous. And I think that thanks to Pride Business Forum and other companies, we need to protect those who are active because that's, that's important. And so thanks to my friends and my colleagues, uh, I think that we are now putting uh, Škoda Auto a little bit more colorful. Yeah, thank you. I think that those vulnerable moments are actually then making us stronger and also the society. But I really want to react to this because you say you don't feel like that you are like the visible person in Škoda by being gay. But how many people are here from Škoda today? Please raise your hand. 
because there are really many people that came, come to see you today, and I really want to thank them because I think you are an inspiration for them and for the people in Škoda. So thank you much. Thank you, and I want to thank all my beloved uh, colleagues and friends for coming, and also the importance. For example, my boss is here, and you know I invited all my ex bosses, and. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I, I actually had, in my five years, I had eight bosses. Mm -hmm. One of them was in Spain, so he really couldn't come. But seven of them, and two of them are here. So thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Maren. Amazing. Thank you. Okay, now the question from the audience. Before I will say it, please, there is not only an option to put a question, but you can put a thumbs up on the question because we will not have time for all of them, so you can rate them and I will ask the one with the more th thumbs up. Yeah, it's a bit of competition, uh, so let, let's pick one that won. Jan, what can we do to support our parent in the process of coming out a parent of queer kids? <laughs> Wouldn't there be an easier question? <laughs> well, I can see. <laughs> well, you know, I, I would like to go back to one thing is I, I really love my parents because, you know, as part of the preparation for uh, tonight, uh, my mom actually went through all of the photo albums and she went through the photos. And <laughs> this really gets me emotional because as much as I love my parents, I also feel a lot of, you know, struggle that I experienced uh, when being gay with parents who had no role models. They didn't know any gay people. And suddenly they got to the situation when their own kid that they love is gay. And it's not easy. It's just, you know, we, and then the only validation that they get is uh, some politicians shouting some terrible things on the media or a neighbor saying some weird stuff. You know, it's, it's really uh, important to have role models in the society. I always say that <laughs> the, the elite, the politicians, the, the, the uh, managers, whoever, the, we have a really long, you know, we have a lot of responsibility to be role models. Because if not, then exactly will happen that there will be a lot of parents who have no idea what to do if their kid is LGBT+. And it, it's not just the case of the past, it's happening even today. Uh, a friend of mine, she, she shared a story last week with me saying that she visited her family and her nephews who are seven and nine they were running around the garden and and shouting hey you faggot hey you gay and they were shouting at each other and then the the little one who's seven he came to her and she said he said aunt but you know i i don't understand like what if i am gay? it doesn't mean that i'm wrong or i'm bad and she said no you're absolutely fine there is nothing to be and it's wrong to say and so she was trying to exactly what the teachers i think should have done but in my case she was trying to do to create a safe environment to say it's wrong to be saying wrong things about uh, gay people to, to push people towards normal means straight because you can be gay or you can be lgbt plus it's normal and we still are struggling in the Czech Republic to get this normalness to the mainstream. Yeah, thank you for that. Okay, question from the audience. Yeah, please. Thank you. I love microphones, but I also have a question. Uh, Škoda Auto made that super cute electric rainbow car that's being shown like in various places. Will it ever go into production? And if not, why not? <laughs> So, um, first of all, I'm an HR person, you know. <laughs> I'm working in learning and development. Before that, I was working as a diversity expert. And uh, everything about marketing and production and Bauerai, planning the, the production actually, uh, is a question that is a very, you know, complex question. But here's the thing, you know, to produce a car, even just one spe special car, is a lot of money. And of course, we at Škoda, we are proud that we have now a respect line, but to have this as a, uh, you know, possibility for anybody to, 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 to buy, it's, I think, first of all, it would decrease the, the prestige of the car and the symbol, and secondly, it's not that easy. And so, I'm sure that uh, it's going to be great for everyone to see the car, and there will be definitely more cars coming in the future, I'm sure, and because we received a lot of positive feedback about the car. But unfortunately, you can't buy it, and you will not be able but to buy it. But I think it, it can be like a limited edition for, a, I don't know, Pride Business Forum members, something like that. <laughs> uh, 
Martina Maybe. Karel, Teresa, you heard the feedback, the voice of the people. They want a serious production. Yes, please. Okay, thank you very much. And I have one last question because it got so many thumbs up, so please do it. Please do it for the next speeches and for the next question. What was, what was there someone from your company that you found especially hard to come out to and how did you solve it? <laughs> so, uh, the most difficult thing for me was that I started as a straight man, right, in, in my company. And so, while it was easy for me to feel safe with my peers at Chikoda Proud and to talk about coming out, to, about, you know, being gay, it was, you know, the, the, the longer I was in the company, the more difficult it was to come out to my previous bosses and to my previous teams that I worked with. I, imagine, I remember that there were moments where I was really comfortable about going to an event, for example, the trainings for the uh, personalists. I was there as a, as a diversity expert, as a representative. I, I listened to Teresa and, and to, to Alesh saying their stories, coming out, you know, like, and, and being out in front of my colleagues, but I was not able to do it. And it's just two years ago. Now, of course, I am able to do it. I'm able to, to say that I'm getting in front of my whole company because I understand the, the importance of that and I am strong enough to, to do it. But back then I wasn't. So I think with the coming out, I wouldn't say one particular person. It was a group of people and it's the same what happened to me in Zlin. You know, when my mom asked me not to talk to anybody in my family about my identity of gay, I <laughs> buried Zlin. I, I, it was kind of like a, like a skansen, you know, like I would go to Zlin, I would still be this very successful, very straight, whatever man, you know, running all over the places, but the topic of uh, sexual orientation was absolutely out of the scope. And it wasn't really until 2020, 2021, when I started coming out to my closest friends from Boy Scouts, from primary school, and also to some relatives. And it's still not a finished process, but I started. And so I think that this is the most difficult thing for anybody, to come out to people who, for the majority of the time that they know you, for that you're straight. Yeah, thank you very much. I know I got you, uh, I put you two pretty hard question and thank you very much for the answering. So maybe one last and a short one. I heard that you had the fifth anniversary with Škoda. How did you celebrate it? Well, I celebrated by writing a post on, on uh, Škoda Auto, uh, on, uh, on LinkedIn about Škoda Auto. But here's the thing, you know, like I, the, 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 more, the longer I am in the company, the more proud I am to be an employee of Škoda because it's an incredible company and I'm really proud. And at the beginning I was struggling a lot, you could hear my story, but now I'm really proud and I want, to, I want everybody to see that you have a lot of potential, a lot of possibilities at Škoda to grow as a, as a healthy, you know, human being and there's a lot of opportunities and you just have to take them. You have to be empowered and you have to be strong enough to, to do that.